In the 1870s, in an effort to save bison from extinction, a tribal member brought some buffalo calves, some of the last wild bison in America, across the Continental Divide to the Flathead Indian Reservation. This was the idea of a man named Ata Tietze, and it was carried out by his son, Shlata T. The buffalo calves grew into a small herd on the reservation, which was later purchased by tribal members Michel Pablo and Charles Allard. At the turn of the century, Michel Pablo's herd was probably the largest free-ranging herd in North America. They ran wild on the Flathead Reservation. I think without the Allotment Act, if that didn't happen, I think the buffalo would have flourished all through this area. The government said that this would be our land forever. And then the government changed their mind because there was good farm property here, so they opened it up, and we about lost our reservation, our homeland. It was that dividing of the land for um, for allotments that forced then the removal of um, Michelle Pablo's herd. Once the allotments were made then and fences built and the bison was sold off, the government comes in and says, well, we need to preserve the bison. We need a, <laughs> a park or a place, a, re a reserve. There was a certain degree of arrogance in how they approached establishing the National Bison Range. The federal government literally took 18,000 700 acres from the tribes with minimal compensation. The tribal membership was never consulted when that land was taken. It was just done. So here you have this, you have this ironic situation where you have a bison range within an Indian reservation and the tribes were not allowed to participate in the management of it. In 1971, the U.S. Court of Claims held that the taking of the land for the National Bison Range was unconstitutional. We fought hard to get back onto the range and, you know, back in the 90s exerted a federal principle of self-governance to be able to manage the Bison Range on behalf of the federal government. It's not about locking anybody out. It's not about allowing certain people in there. It's about sharing, it's about understanding. There are many private individuals, many conservation groups uh, that support tribal management. They say, yeah, it makes sense. But there's some outside entities that are just I hate to say prejudice, but they are. As you get older, you start to learn about the different stereotypes and biases that people have of tribes and, and bison, you know, and sometimes I think we're one together. They almost treat us similarly, you know, and you realize there, there's still a strong anti-Indian movement out there. Fear. I think it's a lot to do with fear, which is pretty sad. And we work well with others. That's the funny thing is that people don't realize um, that we're not scary people when you get to talk to us. Um, and we are very capable. So what better caretakers of keeping buffalo on the landscape in perpetuity than the native people that, that were here and, and watched them evolve and assisted with their um, existence.